I've been in darkness for three days, at least. That's how long my phone says it's been. I keep notes on it, but I can't really be sure anymore. There's no way for me to measure it. If I didn't have my phone's calendar, would just be no way to know. I've been careful with the battery. There's not exactly outlets everywhere down here. I say down here because I must be underground. It's the only thing that could explain this place. Though part of me worries that this place is beyond explaining. I don't remember how I got here. Not even waking up. It's like I just came to on my feet. Or maybe that's just my mind playing tricks on me. I'm not even sure why I'm bothering to explain this. I guess writing helps me maintain my sanity. But it feels like I may be better off without it at this point. I have to do something. Maybe someone will find it and be able to figure out whatever this place is. It's dark. I know, not exactly poetic, but there's no other way to explain this. There's nothing to explain in this place. Dark and empty are the only defining features. When my phone is off, I can't see shit. The kind of darkness that's so all-consuming, I might as well be blind. I know I'm not blind though, because when my phone is on, I can see the floor and myself. I wish I was blind though. It would be a deal more comforting than whatever this is. I'll start with what I can see, I suppose. I seem to be what you would expect from anyone. Jeans, sneakers, a t-shirt, a denim jacket, and sunglasses of all things. Had my phone in my pocket, keys, nothing else, not even a wallet. That's all fairly normal, save my missing billfold. What's weird is what's around me, or rather, what's not around me. The surface I'm standing on seems to be made of concrete. It's too level to be natural, it would have to be man-made, but even that feels wrong to say. Smooth stone, that's it. When I say that's it, I mean that's it. It's a goddamn void. If I point my light up, nothing. Left, nothing. Right, nothing. Behind, nothing. It's just more of this damn flat rock. This whole thing would be easier to swallow if there was something, anything. Boulders, rocks, a locked door, anything. Then I could at least assume I was just trapped somewhere. That would at least make sense. It's the lack of anything that gets me. No ceilings, no walls, no features, just dark and empty. I've walked a good bit. Even ran for a while in an attempt to come across some landmark or object to orient myself, but I haven't found anything. I had my light on for a time, but there's nothing to find, nothing to see, so I turned it off. I have my phone set to ultra power save mode where it gets real basic and reduces its functionality to that of a flip phone. I do want to keep it alive as long as I can. It's comforting in a way. It's the only thing I have. I tried to make phone calls and that got about as far as you could expect. Nothing. At least this place is consistent. Texts don't send either. No service, no data. Go figure. If I'm being honest, I don't recognize my contacts anyways. I have mom and dad labeled, but the pictures? These are just people I don't know. I even had to use the camera to see what I looked like, and to see if they really are my parents. They look close enough, I guess. There's a few other names in here, but again, I don't recognize any of them. Foreign faces, and meaningless names. I remember some things. I remember there being anything. I remember dogs, cable TV, cars, the store, highways, lakes. I remember things, but not who I am. Of all the times and places to have amnesia, I can't think of a worse one. I looked through some of the text threads I had with people. There wasn't much. Apparently I was going to watch a baseball game with someone named Frank. Seems like we were friends. Looks like I was sweet with a girl named Lisa. None of the messages are timestamped, and that has me questioning whether they're even real or not. But I guess I have to assume they are for now. Most of the conversation is pretty shallow. Nothing too specific, and nothing to jog my memories. Everything seems wrong. I'm not sure how much I can trust this phone. It says I've been here three days, and I don't have anything to disprove that. But I'm not thirsty, and I haven't drank anything. So either this clock is wrong, or I've lost the need to hydrate. Both seem equally likely given the circumstances. Come to think of it, I haven't seen my phone battery budge in a long time. I haven't used the bathroom either, and haven't even felt the need. There's no echo when I make noise, and I don't know what to make of that. With the distance I've walked it's clear there's nothing nearby, but nothing for sound to bounce off of. Does this place just go on forever? I can yell at the top of my lungs and it sounds like I'm in a living room. I don't know how I got here. I don't know how I'll leave. I don't know if I'll leave. At this point I can't be sure of anything, except that it's really fucking dark. 
Honestly, I don't even know if I need to do anything. It's all starting to feel pointless. So I guess I'll keep walking, not even knowing if I'm going anywhere. I could be on a giant treadmill and be none the wiser. If anyone finds this, I pray you know the way out of here, if there is one. Even if I die here, just knowing you can escape would be a good deal of comfort, knowing that there's something. I got a text message. You have no idea how much I jumped when I felt my phone vibrate. I've been sitting here in silence listening to the beating of my heart for what felt like hours, so when I heard that noise, it might as well have been a gunshot going off. Phone was turned off too, which added to my surprise, but I stopped asking for this place to make sense a while ago. The message was from Frank. Figured it would be him tore up because I missed the big game. No, you're never gonna believe what he said. Go towards the light. Crock of shit. Regardless of how incredibly useless that bit of information was, it tells me that something knows I'm here and is either trying to help me badly or is fucking with me. I don't know if either of those make me feel any better or worse. Of course, as I try to send something back, no service. Go figure. Frank was right. Every time I look at this phone, even at the lowest brightness, my eyes sting. So you could imagine how when I saw the light I was almost blinded, opposite the way I usually am. Distant as it was, it was the most I've ever seen down here, and it drew me to it like a moth. It took a long damn time to get to it. Now that I had a landmark I could actually gauge my progress. Little by little, the white, burning dot grew. When I finally approached it, I saw it was above me, coming from a hole. Not in the ceiling though, there still was no ceiling. Just a hole, a story or so above me. Light poured out, and despite it being painful to look at, I sat there staring at it for a long while. In addition to the light, a ladder hung down and touched the floor, so I grabbed the rungs and climbed. This place, in addition to whatever else it may be, is a sick joke. Because when I put my head through that hole and climbed my way up, I was greeted with an ocean of white. Bright, white, shining light, with nothing as far as the eye could see. Yet again, somehow, despite not expecting much of anything, this was disappointing. Well, time to get walking. As glaring as the light is, there's a sense of relief that there is something else. Makes it worth the headache it gives me. The hope that I could escape whatever this is. And there's more, too. As I walked, things took shape. Specks on the ground grew and turned to the texture of flooring. Walls slowly started to materialize, an odd tannish yellow, not quite beige. It continued as I kept walking, but it almost felt as if I were staying in the same place, like I was stuck on some big hamster wheel. It didn't bother me though. Something was happening. And after the maddening plague of nothingness, as impossible as this was, it was a welcome sight. When it was finished forming, it looked like office space, but devoid, like somewhere a company party would be held, without the furniture. Looking behind me where I had come from was now sealed, the great white void formed into more tan wall, and now I was greeted with hallways and corridors, another flavor of nothing it would seem, as there proved to be little else in these rooms. But somehow, this was more digestible. Although I was barred from the white expanse, I didn't feel any more trapped. It was relieving to have something in between me and that place really, whatever it was. Maybe if I wander these halls long enough I'll find something. Just the idea of rounding a corner and maybe seeing a desk has me giddy with excitement. Not like I have much say in the matter. Maybe I'll walk into the set of the office or something here. That would be something, wouldn't it? A TV prank. I've given up the idea that this was a bad drug trip a while ago. So I guess that's the best I can hope for. There's something in here with me. If you had said I was going to have company before, I would have been ecstatic, but this feels far from comforting. I wasn't sure of it at first. I would see movement in the corner of my eye, but I just chalked it up to hallucinations. I would spot a blur here or a shadow moving from behind a corner, but every time I check a room, empty as usual. Maybe it's the remnants of my sanity making things up. Who can say? But lately, I can't shake the feeling that I'm being watched. I saw it. Not all of it, but I saw it. It looked like a hand, 
fingers curled around a corner wall. It was huge, larger than any person could be. I stopped when I saw it. Really, I was surprised to have seen anything. When I finally moved, the black leathery fingers peeled back around the corner, disappearing out of sight. I thought for a while about checking what it was. Eventually, I looked behind the wall, and nothing. I'm not sure whether to be surprised or not. Hardly anything surprises me anymore. That's not the only thing either. I'm hearing things too. Started out light. I wasn't sure if it was me imagining something. It began as this low rumbling, but there have been other noises as well. Water flowing, some kind of motor, dragging noises, and lately, screams. I met someone. Not a person. You couldn't call it that. Though it looked like one. I entered a room and there was a very small woman. I was shocked to see anybody. Anything. She was very thin and had an exceptionally pale face. Almost as if she were wearing makeup. Reminded me of a harlequin. But there was a beauty to it. Her cheeks had a slightness to them. But I may have only felt that way because I hadn't seen a woman in god knows how long. She approached me. Neither of us said a word. But we were communicating somehow, I knew. Speaking without saying. It was almost trance-like. Her movements were odd as she walked towards me. Something was off, but I couldn't place what. She got very close, and I saw how short she really was. She didn't even clear my chest. She took my hand and led me somewhere. I couldn't say why, as there wasn't anything in the room I could remember, but I followed. It felt like the right thing to do. Still, we said nothing. When we stopped, she faced me head on and pulled herself onto me. I was shocked at how light she was. She was a little thing, but it felt like she was made of air. Her legs wrapped around my back. Only in hindsight could I say why it felt wrong. They bent at odd angles, and she supported herself by them without her arms or any help from me. Face to face, I was struck by a sudden feeling. It was an intimate position, and most of my vision was taken up by that pale, expressionless face. Stern and beautiful. Somehow, I hadn't noticed until now, her cheeks had large dark black circles on them. Black hair that ended in short tails on her head. It was strange, but alluring. My concentration lapsed, and I realized my eyes were closed, but I didn't remember shutting them. Then I felt it. The outside of my left eyelid. Thread was being weaved through it, led by a hooked needle. My eyes shot open, and I threw the creature off me and ran as fast as I could. I don't know what that thing was, or why it wanted to stitch my eyes shut. But something tells me it wasn't for my benefit. I don't know how far I ran. It's impossible to keep track with no real landmarks in this maze. But I now deeply wish to go back to the nothingness. Numbing as it was, there was a certain bliss to it. But at the same time, the eerie calm I felt with that creature reminds me of the void for some reason. But now all I can feel is fear. Things are starting to appear. At first, it was miscellaneous office junk. Desks, chairs, Filing cabinets, all sporadically placed. As I went on, they started to appear together. One room even had full cubicles set up, but there wasn't much past the surface level. As I wandered, I heard a familiar noise. I couldn't quite place it. Mechanical and repeating. God. It was a printer. I followed the noise until I came upon the thing. Hard at work making copies. It was in the middle of the room, not visibly plugged into anything. I walked up and checked the papers that were coming out. I flipped through the pages, same three words, repeated, one per sheet, over and over. Make. It. Stop. Cliché, I thought to myself. It had a touchpad, so I started clicking through the settings. Words cannot describe how engaging this was. After so long doing nothing, something as mundane as going through printer settings was intensely exciting. Nothing too out of the ordinary, until I got to the files available to print. Names like Viscera, Dismemberment, Ritual Sacrifice, Perfect, I mumbled. Why would it be anything else? My finger hovered over Dismemberment, and I asked myself, do I really? And then pushed it. Surprisingly, it was a family. A regular, happy, smiling family. In a weird way, I have to say I was almost disappointed. As fucked as that sounds. I kept scouring through the images, and most were happy suburban life. Dogs, friends, a birthday party. The printer was still making copies, so I decided to grant the request. I pressed the stop command, 
and the printing came to a halt. The screen froze for a moment, and then began running through the files, showing the pictures I had just seen. And they began to shift, flesh contorted off bright smiling faces, and skin sloughed to the ground, limbs twisted and warped, flexing into unnatural and broken positions. The photo of the dog appeared, and its back split along its spine. Large fangs protruded from the gap, and a new enormous mouth began thrashing as the legs elongated and the original head dropped to the ground. The printer stirred to life again and began printing copies of these. On each paper, the image was alive and moving, horrors twisting and morphing on each. Not wishing to see what was next, I took my leave of the room. The sounds of the printer grew distant, and eventually I was overtaken with the same familiar silence I had grown used to. I wasn't sure if that was comforting or not. The space around me was still populated with standard office fare that grew closer to resembling an actual workspace the more I wandered. I considered how odd being lost in a maze of office space was. Not that any of this place was normal, but when all you have is time to think, you can't help but wonder, why all this? I doubt it makes much difference. I'm still stuck here. The setting doesn't change that much. As I roamed through the desks and computer chairs, I heard another noise. It was a metallic banging, this repetitive slamming, then a pause, but there was something else muffled in between. I followed the noise and, after a series of hallways and doubling back on dead ends, I came to it. A large room with a metal door and a loud banging coming from behind it. Open this! Interlaced the banging, more slamming on the door, and then, Come on! Open the door! The door was sealed with a chain and padlock that shook violently as the door was pounded on. A large red sign was center on its reading, Do not open. I rolled my eyes. I knew I should probably be unsettled by this, but after everything that had transpired, a sort of apathy gripped me. I stared for a moment and said, Hello? It felt odd as I realized this was the first time I had said anything in quite some time. The pounding stopped, and there was a pause. Hey, open this door, I'm stuck in here. Open, I need to get out. I considered for a moment asking about the sign, before I came to the conclusion that I wouldn't get a good answer for that. Are you still there? Let me out of here. I gotta get out of here. Fuck it, I mumbled, and dug my keys out of my pockets, trying them on the padlock. One fit. The padlock and chain dropped to the floor, heavy. The door began to creak open. Obviously, it was shut for a long time. And when it was all the way open, I was met with an empty room. Because why would it be anything else? I poked my head in and glanced around. Nothing. Slowly, I stepped inside. As I came to terms with the space, Part of the wall opened to reveal a huge eyeball warping the paper. A row of sharp teeth opened to a grin underneath it, with uneven lashes jutting out in clumps. The same voice that called to open the door sounded from the thing. Thanks for opening the door. Yeah, don't mention it. Here, I have something for you. A way of saying thanks. The mouth widened, and at the base of the large tongue, there was some sort of gem. It was asymmetrical in an odd shape. I stared. The mouth closed for a moment, and the eye said, Be careful. My teeth are sharp. But don't worry. I won't bite. The maw widened again, revealing the rock. Dumbfounded, I slowly reached my hand into the void. I noticed how humid it was as I reached deep into the wall. It went farther back than it appeared. When almost my whole arm was in, I felt the rock on my fingers and quickly yanked my hand out. As my arm jutted back, my hand caught a fang, and a large gash opened across my palm. Ooh, that's not good, the eye said. Good luck. <laughs> As it twisted and fell back into the wall, gone. Blood gushed from my hand in an unnatural amount, seeping heavily and increasing to a torrential outpour. I stared at my hand as crimson streamed from it. In seconds, I lost more blood than I possibly could have had in my body. It started to pool on the floor. I quickly squeezed my hand tight, and when I opened it again, the cut was sealed, but the blood on the floor continued to rise. It was up to my mid shin as I ran out of the room. Careening through hallways, my steps became more labored as the lake of blood was now up to my waist. I rounded a corner and spotted a set of stairs, charging up them with all of my might, darting out of the pool, soaking wet. As I reached the top, 
The welling blood slowed and ground to a halt. I paused to catch my breath, staring below me into the ocean of blood. I didn't even try to reason with the fact that it had come from inside me and did the only thing I could. Turn around and keep walking. As I continued down the endless hallways, I thought for a moment about this place, trying to decide if I missed the void or not. The horrors this place contained almost made me yearn for nothingness. I wasn't allowed a tremendous amount of time with these thoughts. Occurrences were growing more frequent, and soon I was met with a room containing a terminal and a large glass pane on the wall. This was the first window I had seen in this place. Unfortunately, it didn't lead outside, but simply provided a view of a two-story room half flooded with blood below. I looked at the terminal and then stared at the rock I was given. Somehow I managed to hold on to it despite everything. Guess the adrenaline made me grip it tight. The terminal was just a metal stand with a shape that was obviously perfectly fit to the stone. Hesitant, as I remembered the last time I inserted a key into something, I quickly came to terms that there aren't exactly a whole lot of other options. I inserted the rock. A mechanical noise started, like gears turning. I looked through the glass into the room. Large cages lowered from the ceiling. Inside, there were human shapes, things that looked human, but had no features, twisted into panicked poses, and were lowered into the crimson pool. They made no moves, no sound, save the whirring of the machine. When the last of the cage was finally swallowed, the glass pane shattered and the wall drifted away to dust. I was met with a set of stairs leading directly into the pool. Maybe it was an acceptance of the situation. Maybe there was something calling me to it. Maybe it was fate. But I took the steps down into the wretched lake. The sticky liquid was warm as it encompassed my body. One by one, I took the siren steps until I was completely submerged. I could still breathe and see. The ocean of red reminded me in ways of how I started here. There was a tugging sensation at the back of my neck. I reached back with both hands and pulled, peeling away my skin. It ripped as easily as paper and separated from me. With strength now, I tore the seal to my flesh, though it offered little resistance. Reaching up, I grabbed my scalp and removed what I found, peeling down to less and less. As I removed what was the outer shell and stepped out of myself, discarding the cloak that I wore, my eyes swam out of my skull on their own accord, turning back to witness myself. I gazed at my visage, skinless, eyeless, as the flesh began to contort. Bones bowed and snapped as sinew and meat rearranged itself. My skull split down the middle, and following the whole of my body was torn in half, only to be rearranged in a grotesque and magnificent new form. Tissue crawled with its own intention as my eyes floated in what felt like soup. To what shape I took, it is impossible to describe. The bones reformed and the flesh resituated to a new being, a new shape. But it is illusory. For how long I will stay like this, no one can say. The flesh has its own will, its own motives, and I now bear witness to my own actions as a stranger, a spectator from afar. I still walk the halls, though not of my own accord. To what end, it is impossible to say. The flesh, a writhing mass, bleeding, twisting, bending, cracking, sliding and snapping, an ever-morphing hulk of viscera made manifest to roam with an indescribable purpose. Perhaps one day I will witness myself come upon someone like myself. Maybe not. Only time will tell.